to ask you about about Chris Olave, As somebody who, who plays with him and watches him every day on and off the field. What stands out to you the most about him? Uh, just his like consistency stuff. So, um, I say Chris never had a bad practice. Um, he's always consistent. Never drops anything. So I say that's the biggest thing with Chris. Is he's, he's just always you know the same. Always consistent with uh, the way he plays. Is he as quiet as he seems? Uh, when I first got here, he was more quiet. But, you know, after getting to know him these last uh, couple of years, a year and a half, I say he's not as quiet. Nah. OK, thanks, Garrett. No problem. We'll go next to Austin Ward, Letter Monroe. Austin. Garrett, what do you uh, like about these jet sweeps that you're getting? Um, just the perimeter blocking, you know. So our receiver room has put a big emphasis on that. You know, ever since the first week, we thought we, uh, we didn't show up on the perimeter as much as we would like to. So uh, since then, uh, the jet sweeps have just been hitting well. And uh, I'd say I owe that to the, you know, the other receivers out there making uh, throwing blocks for me. All right, next up, Tony Gerdeman, Buckeye Scoop. Tony. Garrett, um, you're, you're putting up some pretty decent numbers right now. I'm just wondering how fun this is being in this passing offense for a guy like you. Yeah, I mean, being in this offense and playing with someone like Justin, um, I mean, he's always going to put it where it needs to be. So, uh, I mean, it's just on, you know, me, Chris, and J-Mo, and Jackson, you know, to make a play at that point. So, um, I feel like I've been in a lot of uh, good situations to make plays, and then it's just on me to make a play at that point. So, What's the next step for, for the passing offense and you? Uh, just, you know, keeping it up, you know, as the schedule goes on. So, the weather's going to get colder. Teams are going to, you know, get some film. So, uh, I mean, I think just being able to be consistent with throughout the season, that, that'll be the biggest thing for us. Thank you. All righty. We'll go next to Stephen Means from Cleveland.com. Stephen. Hey, Garrett, you're like 16, 17 in, games into your career here. Um, just has this gone, not necessarily the numbers part, but just the way they're using you, the way this offense from a passing standpoint has evolved since you've been here. Has this gone about the way you thought it would go in the way when Ryan Day was talking to you and recruiting you that it would go? Has this gone pretty much according to plan? I mean, just watching the, uh, the offense my senior year in high school with Dwayne, um, you know, I saw a lot of things that, you know, I, I wanted to be a part of. So um, I tried to come in with no expectations. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't say as far as personal things go, I, I, you know, I had uh, expectations coming in. But just the way the offense has, has gone these last two years and the way we're opening it up in the passing game, yeah, I would say I, I expected this, yeah. When you were getting recruited, was – did they ever talk to you about you're going to play outside one year and then we're going to probably move you inside your sophomore year? Was that ever a conversation before this season? No, nah, it wasn't a specific conversation, but, um, you know, Coach Day said he liked how, you know, he saw that I could play, uh, you know, any position at receiver. So he, he liked that coming out of high school. So uh, I wouldn't say it was out of, the, out of the question coming out. Thanks. All right, we'll go next to Dan Hope from 11 Warriors. Dan. Hey, Gary, you joined a list of guys, uh, Chris Carter, Terry Glenn, and David Boston, who've had three straight 100-yard games. Just what does that mean to you to have your name alongside those guys? Yeah, um, with those dudes putting up those records, you know, those are the people I, I looked up to growing up. I mean, I wasn't able to watch uh, most of them play just because of my age. But, um, you know, seeing that, seeing my name along their names, you know, that was super special to me. So, uh, I mean, now I just got to try and keep it going. And, uh, you know, hopefully uh, you know, we can break some, break some records. How do you build off that when you've had that kind of a start to the season? Um, I mean – I'd say the biggest thing is, uh, I've said this a lot this uh, interview, but just being consistent. So, um, you know, getting good practice in um, and that translating on Saturdays. So, you know, if I feel like if I put, put the uh, work in during the week, it'll, it'll translate to Saturday. Thanks, Eric. All righty, next up, Nathan Baird, Cleveland.com. Nathan. Hey, Garrett. In the past, Ohio State has you know, rotated the receivers a lot. They were even doing it last season, still pretty deep, you know, five, six guys deep. This year, you and Chris are – you're getting a, just a, a bulk of those targets. We've talked before to running backs about how that kind of helps them get in the game. Does it work at all the same for receivers to be on the field that much and to be getting targeted that much? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, being on the field, you definitely feel your groove, you know, when, once you get going. So, uh, I mean, when you're in your groove, the only thing that can really take that away is, you know, getting taken out of the game and cooling back down. So, um, you know, I say being able to, you know, get a feel for the game. And uh, stay in there, and then also know I can I can count on the backups to come in and, and uh, take my place and not miss a beat. You know that's a big thing for our offense. So I think we're as deep as we need to be at, at receiver, 
and um, you know everyone can uh, take their snaps and uh, feel good about it. Okay, got time for a couple more. Uh, we'll go to Brendan Gulick, Buckeyes now on Sports Illustrated. Brendan. Hey, Gary, what was it like on Saturday uh, when you guys were on the sideline? Because Rutgers didn't really have any um, success stopping you guys offensively. But in the second half, when, when they started to put some things together and, and obviously had all these you know gimmicky trick plays and things, what was it like as an offense when you guys were on the sideline watching that and, and, and seeing it all unfold? Well, uh, you know, as an offense, you want to take the pressure uh, off your defense. And, uh, you know, we feel like you, when you go out there and put up 40, you know, whatever it was uh, this weekend, you know, you're doing that. So uh, we know what we need to do. Um, and that score of your drive, that's our, that's our expectation. That's what we're trying to do. So, um, I mean, we feel like if we do that, I mean, even if we do half of that, we're putting ourselves in a good situation to win. Thank you. All right, got time for two more questions. We'll go to uh, Tim May from Larry Monroe. Tim. Thank you very much, Mike. I was just wondering, uh, Garrett, has there been a play, was there a play the other night when, when it came from the sidelines where you went, yes, this is going to break wide open? I mean, do you ever do you ever think like that? And can you sense what uh, Coach Day is trying to get done, basically, from play to play, possession to possession, of, of breaking things open? Um, just being a receiver, you know, when I when I see a play that I got a deep route on, you know, I just automatically open my eyes big. So, um I mean, anytime they call a play where I, I know I'm going down the field, you know, I'm excited for it. If I feel like I got a good matchup or a, a situation to be one on one, um, I'm expecting to get the ball. So, um, I mean, there's definitely some calls that Coach Day makes, and you know, I, I kind of see the same thing where he's watching the defense and uh, trying to get certain matchups. So, yeah. How many plays do you have to have in your head uh, going into a game? How many plays are in your head? Oh, um, I mean, there's there's some that just come in secondhand knowledge. But um, there's some that I'll key on. So throughout the week that uh, you know I might have might have missed a rep on during uh, the week of practice, or something like that. So uh, I'd say I probably have like three or four plays that I you know I try to mark out and make sure that I don't mess up during the game, just because I knew that those are ones that I might have missed on uh, during the week. Thanks, man. Yeah, All right, sure. and last question for Garrett. We'll go to Patrick Murphy from Two Four Seven. Patrick. Garrett, how aware are you on the sidelines when you get to 100 receiving yards? Uh, we have no clue. So, um, yeah, I'm just I'm just playing, and then uh, you know, once we get to the locker room, we figure that all out. But uh, you know, I usually have no clue. I mean, you kind of have a feel as a receiver, but uh, I mean, there's nothing that pops up on the big board or anything that I've seen, at least that uh, you know that tells you. So I got no clue. Is that a benchmark you you try to hit? I mean, 100 receiving yards is impressive, but three straight games. Are you are you hoping to hit that each game? Uh, I mean, I'd say as a receiver, you know, you got goals for yourself. You got personal goals. And uh, 100 yards, you know, usually is a landmark of a good game, you know, for a receiver. So, uh, I mean, there's a lot of other ways to get that done. But, uh, you know, 100 yards is just a good stat, good uh, benchmark number. But, um, you know, if, if that's what the uh, team calls for, you know, I think I can do that. And, uh, you know, if I got to get 20 yards, and uh, I mean, it, it is what it is. So, so. All right, Garrett, thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it today.